and tonight we're going to talk about using QUCS for nonlinear uh, modeling. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a little history of uh, what I've been doing on my website uh, because that will make the model make a lot more sense. Okay, what we did was uh, come up with a typical biasing circuit for DC biasing for a common emitter trans, uh, transistor circuit with an NPN. And uh, what I did was I, I drew all the currents, all the resistances, and they were given generic names. And uh, the VCC or the power supply. And uh, one thing that I do want to point out, as I've talked about on my website, the IEEE direction for current is all the currents going into the uh, device. I drew it with conventional current, current going from positive to negative. So IE is backwards. The current going through out of the emitter is backwards compared to the IEEE standard, but it makes a heck of a lot more sense to do it this way. And for these models, it doesn't really matter. As long as you know what you're doing and you draw arrows and stuff to understand it. Okay, from that, we developed a model for the transistor for DC. And uh, we replaced the transistor with two, voltage, two current sources. One of them is a dependent. And the dependent depends on the amount of current going through the, the base times a gain called beta and an independent current source and this current source is basically leakage it's the stuff you don't want to have but it's there it turns out it's a very small amount so I didn't even use it in my calculations but it's there it's important if the transistor starts getting hot or you're putting it in a hot area that that value goes up but we didn't deal with it in our modeling but it's there. And then a other device to replace the transistor is this thing right here called VO. It's a current, it's a voltage source. And VO is uh, the amount of voltage you have to reach before you can forward bias the transistor. So that's our model. And you see that I call it VRB1, RB2 for this voltage divider here. RE for the the uh, resistor that fits on the uh, emitter and RC for the resistor fits on the uh, fits on the collector and uh, the reason we added RE we did a much simpler circuit earlier in the, uh, the blog but we added RE because we had to compensate for beta beta runs anywhere from 100 to 300 and so we made it 200 but that caused a lot of problems in the very first circuit we did, which was much simpler. Okay, so we went to, uh, we did calculate everything by hand. We went to QUCS, and uh, we made this circuit here, and this is basically the same circuit you just saw. I put some current meters in series with it. And then I, I labeled all these voltages, all these points, uh, the base, the emitter, and the uh, collector. And that way I could look at all the voltages and all the currents going into the transistor. And I calculated values so that I got an IC of 50, 50 milliamps. And I got the voltage between VC and VE to be... Uh, 3.75 I think it was uh, if you subtract those two numbers you should be somewhere right around 3.75 and so that's what we decided to make the voltage and we got it all to work so everything was hunky dory it worked okay and the way you change these values let's just change beta to a lower value click on it change it to the value you want and then make sure you push enter it's now changed you'll see these values change once I run a simulation go back to it and the numbers have changed down there 
you see that IC is no longer 50 milliamps, it's 49 milliamps. So everything worked. Okay, now let's go ahead and we'll check it out to uh, using the nonlinear model. Because there's some stuff I need to show you about that to use Q, QCS in a nonlinear. So we will open up a new project. And it's going to say, you want to save that thing? And yeah, I'll save it. I'm going to open up a new project. And now the transistor, the model's been replaced. And this, a transistor's put back in it. But since we're running the computer simulation, we're obviously going to have to model this transistor. So if you click on the transistor and you do edit properties and I had to edit those properties to begin with or I could have never ran this you have a whole bunch of numbers here that you have to input and that is a problem. So how do you find those model those numbers? The best and easiest way is to go to the web Go to my good buddy Google, and I type in 2N, 2N, 3904 SPICE parameters. And it gives me some places to look. So as I do that, and right there is the SPICE parameters. Okay, I printed that out, had a piece of paper then that I could use, and I looked at all those values and then found them to fit into that, into the uh, place on the model. So we will look at a couple of those. Okay, NPN was up automatically because I had chosen NPN transistor symbol. Okay, IS, I had to look that one up, and it says it's 6.74F is what it says on the model. So then I had to find out what the heck does an F mean, because uh, that's a Greek symbol, and I'm not, or a symbol for numbers that I'm not really used to. So back to Google, and I type... Spice value letters. That was the one it hit. And this little dude right here is the one that showed me that. And you see that an F, small f equals 10 to the minus 15. P is pico, 10 to the minus 12. N is nano, 10 to the minus 9. U is micro, 10 to the minus 6. And M is milla. 10 to the minus 3. We've used all of those. I'm not real sure why mills in there. Uh, that convert, converts from uh, I'm not real sure what that, that's converting to. I think it's converting from uh, mil, meters into uh, an inch into meters. Uh, probably a thousandth of an inch into to meters. Uh, because that 24.5 is the number of millimeters in an inch. So it has something to do with inches and meters, but I'm not real sure what it is. I'm not sure why it's on this. Anyhow, we've got the other numbers, and you're all used to uh, kilo, meg, gig, and tetra, if I remember right, or tera, because uh, that's how things are measured in memory on computers anymore, terabytes. So I guess it's Terra. And so that's what those magic number, those magic letters mean. And now you know where to find it. Spice value letters is what I searched for. Okay. So I gave us that. Okay, some of these values like NF and NR are not on the Spice model. If they're not, then what I did was I left them at the default value that they came up with. Uh, and it tells you what these things mean. So like IS is the saturation current. NF is the uh, forward emission coefficient. And NR is the reverse emission coefficient. I have no idea what those mean. 
Uh, it was basically monkey see, monkey do, and you punch in all these numbers. Um, let's look up what this one was, IKF. IKF is 66.78 milli. So what I did was 66.678 times e 10 to the minus 2, or e to the minus 2. I could have used 66.78 e to the minus 3. I had a problem when I punched this in that I had to troubleshoot. And that's what the next video is going to be about, is show you a little bit about this. So anyway, you get all these numbers in there, and uh, everything's hunky-dory yet okay. And now we're ready to simulate. Now I could run a DC simulation, but I don't think it's going to let me do that. Yeah, it was not happy. And let's see what it did. Uh, simulation, view last messages. Creating that list and had some, it just didn't get it done. And the reason why is once you go to one of these nonlinear models, you have to first find what to calculate DC bias. When you do, all the numbers appear here anyhow. So we've got everything. Now these numbers don't exactly agree with my model, which means that my model is not as good as this model. But this model is not really reality yet. We're still running a model of simulation. But this one's a lot closer. For instance, I had exactly 50 milliamps on the uh, previous, on, on the uh, model that I had ran. This one comes up with 47.5. So, it's now time to go back and try to get exactly what I want. And I can do that. I can play with these values and try to make it work. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, mostly because I don't feel like wasting your time while I'm playing with this thing. But anyway, this model is an improvement upon the model that we used. The other model, the model that we used to develop the numbers, model we actually use to develop the numbers is actually easier because you get an idea of what things are, what they're going to do. And so we went through in the uh, website talking about how we uh, calculated all these. And it was relatively easy to do because this is a much more simple model. It's linear. <laughs> so Ohm's law applies. And uh, Ohm's law is easy to apply for the situation. So this was the model we developed by, but the other model, the SPICE model, being nonlinear, it has the actual exponential currents and all of the values like that. Uh, so it's a better model of how the transistor really works. And that's the way that you get the numbers. To input into a transistor, uh, for the transistor model and the nonlinear model, you go to the actual website, you type in the transistor number, and say SPICE parameters, and there will be some site somewhere that will give you those parameters. Sometimes those parameters appear on the bottom of a data sheet. This particular data sheet, they did not appear, so I had to input them. So, or I had to find them, and I found them off the website. So that's the way you get it done, and that's what it will produce. Uh, if I try to go to this one now and do DC bias, it'll also give me all the all the numbers. It also puts them at the wrong places, so you can't read any of them. Uh, as you see, there's a lot of stuff typing over itself, but it does uh, it does do them even in this model even though it's a linear model. So, anyway, that's the way you can do it. And uh, hopefully you got something out of this. The next one I'm going to show you what happens when things go wrong. Uh, that cost me a little bit of time. Uh, we'll do that in the, the very
very next video. Appreciate you watching. Hopefully you got something out of this. This is Gary Fox of Create and Make. Thank you.